What up YouTube, it's Miser Hates Company. In this video, we are looking at the tier list that so many people generally ask for, especially new people to the game. And in this tier list, I'm actually gonna start a brand new series. So every month, I'm gonna rank all of the heroes in the best uh, categories for both PvP and PvE. And in doing so, I'm gonna then break it down into Dimension Duel rankings and then Omega War rankings for, I guess, for PvP. I'm still working on PvE. I'm looking at either like Alliance Raids, because it's sort of like in-game PvE, and then Special Invasions, which is another in-game PvE format. But if you do wanna see the best PvE heroes for each month, make sure you are subscribed to this channel because that video will be coming every month as well. More specifically, whenever this one is posted the next day. So, but this video is in fact about the very best heroes for PvP in both Dimension Duel and Omega War for July of 2022. Every month, like I said, we will be updating said list and going from there. And I think some of you are going to find this list very interesting. So without further ado, let's get straight to the video. Okay, so like I said in a previous video, I myself have been re-rolling Spider-Man as my main or I guess sort of my off main because I'm going to be maining uh, Scarlet Witch whenever we are able to transmute her. But again, for right now, I am working on Spider-Man as I guess sort of a, a main ult, if you will, until transmute becomes available. But that is not what today's video is about. Today we are talking about tier lists. So the first one I want to talk about is Dimension Duel. So let's take a look at that one first. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that in Dimension Duel, I have different categories. So we have S tier, which is the absolute best. S is going to be only one ranking of S per category. Whoever's ranked S is deemed the truly the best of the best for this category. And then they're going to go into A, B, C, and then D. So first things first, I have at the S tier, I have Spider-Man. Spider-Man, when it comes to Dimension Duel, is just in a league of his own. He's the only hero, for the most part, Captain Marvel does it to a certain degree, but he is the only hero that like demands you to build a certain stat just to deal with him. And that, of course, is accuracy. If you don't have accuracy, you're going to lose to every single Spider-Man you fight, which for the most part is a big problem for a lot of people because that's just another stat you have to go for. Now, I would add a caveat that this tier list is based off the majority of people. So the average Joe playing this hero. Now, I would totally agree that at the very max level that some of these heroes would perform better than others. But that's, of course, like the top 1% of whales. And that's not really who my, I guess, target audience is. I want to tell you who, in a general sense, at the, when you look at all the different heroes or all the different people playing these different heroes, who would be the most consistent uh, in this rank, and that's where I rank them. So, like, for example, I would actually have Captain Marvel a lot higher, but I do think that you have to build her so specifically and that it's going to be, like, the top 1% to 5% that actually is able to make that difference that I don't think she's necessarily ranked as high, that high for the general public. Hopefully that makes sense. What if you disagree? It's my opinion. So it is what it is. But like I said, let's continue. So Spider-Man is, of course, in um, S rank because he does demand um, you to build accuracy. And he does very, very well for, like I said, like the average Joe. You can spend very little or if nothing, really, and do very, very well in PvP, which is unlike most heroes. So that's why I have Spider-Man ranked S for Dimension Duels. Moving on, I'm actually just going to start at the top and work my way down. So Captain America, um, he did receive, I guess, a bit of a nerf. Um, he's still ranked A for me. He is very difficult to deal with when built correctly. Um, again, this is the average Joes I'm talking about. Um, you could definitely bump him up to S tier once he is built fully out. But again, you can make that case for a lot of heroes in this, in this category. Moving on, we have Captain Marvel. Again, average Joes, uh, I think C at best. Um, I almost knocked her down, but after the buff she did receive, she's definitely doing better. I've seen more Captain Marvels in Dimension Duel, so I would not be surprised come this month or this video next month that she's bumped up to B. I just want to see a little bit more consistency in terms of the players that are playing Captain Marvel, and then I would be very interested in bumping her up because it is well overdue because, of course, she was at the S spot forever ago before they nerfed the ever-loving goodness out of her. Moving on, I have Black Widow. So there's three heroes that I think are in a category altogether, where depending on how much um, you know additional gear or cards or special battle badges or companions, you could put one in front of the other. But 
Again, as a total average, I personally think that the three of these are very, very close and they're in B tier. Those three are going to be Black Widow, Iron Man, and Storm. Black Widow and Iron Man have, at least in my opinion, have been uh, teeter-tottering for a while now on like who's better in which category when it comes to PvP. Both of them require um, very generic builds. It's nothing like super crazy. I mean, if you want to be like the best Black Widow, that is going to be a very more, very much a uh, specific build that is harder to obtain. But you could argue the same thing about Iron Man. Storm, I think the uh, the bubble shield build, if you will, is just so, <laughs> I would say dumb, but so difficult to deal with. Um, I don't think it's dumb only because it is what they have to do just to be successful in the game. So I don't fault them for that. Um, so I would rank all three of those in the B category. Moving on, we have Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange was again buffed. Um, I rank him C. I mean, you, I run into some good Doctor Stranges that I lose to no matter on what hero I'm using, but I do think those are few and far between. I do not think that the general public does well with Doctor Strange unless he's built out with more detail. So for that reason, I have him currently ranked to C, but similar to Captain Marvel, I would not be surprised if going into the next month, of this video when I do it again, that he's maybe in a different spot. Again, I just want to see more consistency. I don't see enough um, good Doctor Stranges to rank him any higher than a C at this time. Um, Star-Lord is, uh, in my opinion, is a sleeper that a lot of people are sleeping on. I rank him in this video as, uh, for July at least, for rank A in Dimension Duel. He does, whoopsie, I have been AFK for too long, but I think that he is in just a, um, in a very good spot when it comes to uh, PVP in general. You're gonna see that on the Omega Wars list as well, but he does fantastic. He is very, very strong and does a ton of damage. Now, moving on to, I guess, Magic. Uh, this hurt me to put her here, but I'm gonna be honest. Magic is just not good for Dimension Duel. She is just not it. She does not have the right toolkit to do well. Sure, some magics do okay, but even at like the top 1%, I would rank her at like a B at best. And in that situation, you might as well have rolled a Black Widow, Iron Man, or Storm and had to use a lot less expensive gear to do just as well. So for that reason, I just think magic when it comes to Dimension Duels is a rank D. Now, when it comes to Scarlet Witch, I have her as a C, but this is mainly because we do not have Transmutate yet. Uh, magic changed pretty dramatically when it, when Transmutate came out. At least we saw a little bit of a buff to her. Scarlet Witches are very, very strong right now, so I am fascinated to see what she does when we are looking at her in a fully transmuted outfit, fully customized out, fully built to perfection. And I, for that reason, am holding off on ranking her any higher than a C. Now let's go ahead and move on to my Omega War tier list. I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quicker because some of them are the same. We're gonna start with, of course, Spider-Man. I have him ranked S tier again. For the average Joe, like I said, it, all the same reasons I use for Dimension Duel. Captain America, I did bump down from A to B for Omega War. I just think that he is not as hard to deal with nowadays. You can, um, especially as a flyer, you can just kind of get away from him. Um, now, again, if you have two of them on top of you, it's going to be a problem, but I don't think that they are as good as they were in this group setting. Captain Marvel, I still have rank C. Again, she, I don't see like any Captain Marvels in um, Omega War. I do see, like I said, slightly more in Dimension Duel, but just not have, having that presence in Omega War leads me to believe that she is just not in the right spot for right now. And then again, I have Black Widow, Iron Man, and Star-Lord in sort of a uh, class of their own. But in this category, I have them all ranked A because they all do extremely well in this group setting. So I would still group them all together. Actually, I did, now that I look at it again, it's actually Black Widow, Iron Man, and Star-Lord instead of Storm. Um, and that is still accurate. All three of these heroes do exceptionally well. Um, this would actually be a bump up for Black Widow and Iron Man. Star-Lord staying the same at the uh, a spot. So I do think this is an accurate representation of what we are seeing in Omega War again, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, I think that Doctor Strange just again, uh, just not it. I mean, you see his ultimate, it, it does, you know, a little bit more, but it's not hurting you. Like, you know, you're not going to burn two dodges to break out of it. I mean, I guess you could if you're Spider-Man, it can get dodges back faster, but it's not the end of the world if you take the damage from it. Uh, moving on, um, Storm, I did bump down from an A to a B when you compare it to PvP. Storm is a okay option. Um, she does decent in Omega War, but it's just so squishy. And even with the bubble build, she can get focused down as soon as it pops by multiple people instead of just one. And then she just kind of blows up. So for that reason, I did bump her down to B. Magic, I bumped up from the D rank to the C. 
she actually does decent when it comes to um, Omega War. She does can demand sort of a presence, especially if she builds into her ultimate and get her ultimate back um, that much quicker. And in those circumstances, she's actually doing, actually doing a lot better in group fights. Um, but she's not doing tons of damage. You either build her like a glass cannon and do a lot of damage, or you build her sort of a tank, and she is like sort of just annoying to deal with. And in some cases, like the very tippity top, you're just unkillable to a certain degree. But for that reason, average Joe's, I'm ranking C. Last but not least, we have Scarlet Witch. I personally am going to rank Scarlet Witch at a B, and that is because Scarlet Witch, again, doesn't have Transmutate, but she has so much in her toolkit. She is so good, as is, even without like all the best special cards on her or a fully nanoed out gear set. She is already doing very well in um, Omega War. She is very squishy, but again, I think we would see that kind of transition away once we do see her getting Transmutate available, which is hopefully coming next month, in which case I anticipate this list being shaken up all over the place because that's going to be some pretty awesome changes. Now, let me know in the comments below if you totally disagree. Let me know why. Let's have a good educated conversation or debate, if you will, on who you think is the best for PvP in these different um, categories. And like I said, I am working on a video for PvE. So if you want to see that video, make sure you smash like A on this one and B, smash that subscribe button so you can make sure you get the notification on when that video does go live. But I do feel like this representation is a good one for PvP, at least in my opinion, like I said. And if you like I said, if you disagree, I would love to entertain the conversation with you in the comments below. Until next time, guys, lock it in.